It is important to support funding initiatives to allow our brilliant researchers and clinicians across the country to discover breakthroughs to improve the quality of our lives by bringing discoveries from the laboratory into clinical application in a timely, safe, and effective fashion. For example, you might have heard the announcement that, that Jan just referenced that was made yesterday by Governor Strickland and Mary Jackson, where together, Phillips Healthcare, University Hospitals, and Case Western Reserve University are creating the Global Advanced Imaging Innovation Center. This center, developed with $33.4 million from Phillips Healthcare and $5 million in investment to Case Western Reserve University from the State of Ohio Third Frontier Funding, will be based inside University Hospitals Case Medical Center. Newly released, newly released advanced imaging equipment will be placed inside of University Hospital's new cancer hospital for clinical feedback and enhancement in a renovated space within the hospital's research facilities to house prototype equipment and co-locate clinicians, researchers, and Phillips product development teams. This type of investment must be encouraged in order to allow breakthrough discovery to continue to occur in our academic medical centers nationwide. Fourth, fun funding for health information technology must increase. According to a recent national study, many health systems have cut their spending on information technology due to budget constraints. And as a result, many health systems have obsolete legacy systems that need to be replaced and networked in order to provide care coordination and patient safety. We are proud that the Board of University Hospitals has supported our investment in information technology through the implementation of our new electronic medical record, which will put university hospitals in the top 5% of health systems nationwide who have invested in integrated inpatient electronic medical records. And through an information technology based quality improvement program that began several years ago, university hospitals physicians sent almost 1.5 million electronic prescriptions to pharmacies for their patients in 2009, leading to improved efficiency and a higher degree of patient safety. Health systems nationally need to prioritize information technology and take advantage of the $19 billion that has been made available through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which is a positive start, but far from enough to promote information technology adoption on a national basis. In the state of Ohio, under the leadership of Governor Strickland, the Ohio Health Information Partnership was formed to coordinate the development of information exchanges and to improve the adoption of electronic medical records among hospitals, health centers, and physicians' offices across the state. In Northeast Ohio, the Case Western Reserve University Regional Extension Center was awarded $8 million to coordinate this process across our entire region and to create a sustainable model for managing the ongoing support of the electronic medical records. The purpose of this funding is to connect the rural underserved physician practices to electronic medical records and act as a conduit for sharing information to improve outcomes of care and reduce the overall costs of care. University Hospitals is actively engaged in the center's governance and is currently involved in the selection of preferred ambulatory electronic medical record vendors who can help Ohio Health Information Partnership achieve its important objectives. Fifth, the health reform legislation stopped short of creating a permanent fix for the Medicare sustainable growth rate. This is a method currently used by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to control Medicare spending for physician services. Although this is a complex process, Simply stated, Congress has yet to provide a permanent fix to current physician payments under the Medicare program, and Congress has suspended these reductions in these payments three times just in this past year. If Congress does not act again to prevent these reductions, physicians who treat Medicare patients would have seen a 21% reduction in their payments from Medicare beginning on June 1st of this year. According to the Congressional Budget Office, if physician payments are kept at current Medicare payment rates, a permanent fix at current payment levels would cost $276 billion over the next decade, which is above and beyond the current health reform cost of $980 billion through 2019. Two other important issues that have not been addressed in health care reform include medical malpractice reform and administrative simplification. We must also devote sufficient analysis and make policy decisions regarding advanced directives and palliative care that we heard so much about in the reform debate. Since 25% of medical costs in the Medicare program are incurred in the last year of a Medicare beneficiary's life. And we must also streamline government oversight. Under this new legislation, the roles of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Labor, 
the Food and Drug Administration, all have been expanded, and more than 100 new federal government agencies, commissions, panels, and other oversight bodies have or will soon be created. So let's talk about the future, pacing ourselves, cost solutions, collaboration, and the importance of empirical analysis. If we want to succeed in the short and long term, we need to carefully examine other healthcare delivery systems that are already in place, replicate their successes, and learn from their failures. To this end, we can look to the state of Massachusetts for some guidance. Dr. John Kingsdale, the Executive Director of the Commonwealth Health Insurance Connector Authority, an independent authority established under Massachusetts landmark health reform legislation in 2006 to promote coverage of the uninsured, said, arguing by analogy is perilous, especially when applying one state's experience to the nation. Still, a critical element of strategy is asking the right questions, and the Commonwealth's experience underscores several. If coverage expansion must be accompanied by cost reduction, how can our nation undertake both giant steps at the same time? And if truly comprehensive reform is required, how can it be staged at the federal level? To that end, we must sequence reform and provide adequate resources and flexibility to ensure a successful implementation. Even after passing the reform law in 2006, the state of Massachusetts has yet to solve the cost challenge. How Massachusetts addresses this problem will be instructive as we as a nation search for ways to resolve the cost issues that may be created, obviated, or potentially worsened under this new legislation. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the $980 billion needed to fund health reform between now and 2019 will come almost equally from two primary sources, spending cuts and new taxes and fees. The cuts in spending will come from reductions in Medicare and Medicaid payments made to hospitals and physicians, and although more patients will be covered by insurance for services that will be rendered, services will not, the paid services will not be enough to cover our costs at our nation's current level of spending. In 2003, 30% of hospitals in the United States were not profitable. In 2008, 50% of hospitals were not profitable due to operating losses and the decline of investment income. And the average operating margin for a profitable hospital is about 1.5%. As we search for solutions to maximize quality and, and minimize costs, short-term fixes such as caps on reimbursements that impose arbitrary limits on payments to providers without addressing the underlying value structure and functioning of the delivery system can disrupt access to essential medical services and do irreparable damage to health care systems. Those of us on the front lines have a special responsibility to lead the way to create a foundation for success. Abraham Lincoln, a man who created sweeping change, said, as our time is anew, we must think and act anew. In spite of its shortcomings, health care in America today is by many measures among the best in the world and consists of well-trained, well-intentioned providers who have been responsive to the needs of our patients and provide excellent care under the economic, legal, insurance, and payment structures in place today. To succeed in the future, we must collaborate and embrace a new system that changes our current paradigm and coordinates wellness, prevention, ambulatory, acute, chronic, longitudinal, and palliative care and emphasize the importance for all of us of advanced directives. Under this new reform paradigm, healthcare organizations of tomorrow will be recognized, rewarded, penalized, and judged on how well we take care of the sick and injured who come through our doors and how well we improve the health of the communities that we serve. There will be an increased focus on value and a greater accountability to demonstrate that the care we provide is the best it can be based on the concept of transparency and outcomes performance measurement. This new reform initiative, by some measure, allows health care providers to serve as the architects of our own destiny. The vision statement of the American Hospital Association is of a society of healthy communities where all individuals reach their highest potential for health. We must continue to provide the highest quality care and keep the needs of our patients in the forefront of our mission statements, our vision statements, and most importantly, our actions. Our new national health care delivery system needs to have a solid foundation and an infrastructure to consistently meet or exceed the Institute of Medicine's goals for patient care, which should always be safe, meaning patients should not be harmed by the care that is intended to help them, efficient, care should be based on scientific knowledge and offered to all who could benefit and not to those not likely to benefit, 